Hello everyone, Neil Bachoven here. Good to be with you again. First off, I wanna thank all of you who liked and supported my previous video series, Paleo Human Mysteries. If you haven't seen those, be sure to check them out. And a special thanks to those who have read my books and responded so enthusiastically to them. That definitely helps me keep going on all this. My three books have one thing in common. They're all set around the time when early modern humans, that's us, migrated out of Africa and met up with Neanderthals in Europe about 45,000 years ago. And we know that happened. The ancient DNA evidence is clearly showing that we interbred with Neanderthals. But exactly what all happened and why the Neanderthals disappeared remains largely shrouded in mystery. But our topic today may be the most mysterious thing of all, paleo cave art. We found it all over the world on every continent except Antarctica. From many different eras, created by a number of different hominids besides us. Those include Neanderthals, Denisovans, and even earlier members of our ancient relatives. I'm about to show you some mind-blowing images of this art, but what's really cool, and I think more important, is to know the stories and science behind them, what we're learning from all this. Like, when did humans start making art? What's the oldest art on various continents? Who made it? And what did it all mean? But it's also important to acknowledge the profound impact the art has on us today. Some years ago, when I visited Lascaux II in France, I expected to be moved emotionally. I mean, I'm a geologist. I love this kind of thing. But everyone in our group of about 20, people from all walks of life, everyone was stunned, just breathless. And I was struck that if all these folks who were jaded by constant bombardment of all sorts of amazing visual images from TV to Facebook to whatever, if they were so intensely moved by the Lasco images, just imagine the effect they had on paleo people at the time. I love this quote. This guy says that the cave handprints gave him the most intense emotion that he'd ever experienced, and he thinks they'll do the same for you. And these cave images begin to give us insights on what those ancient folks may have been thinking and why some of them put aside their daily struggle just for survival to leave a handprint or paint those beautiful, beautiful images. Were they calling on the spirits or teaching their youngsters or were they just trying to say, hey, here I am. This is my life and my story. Well, we're never gonna know for sure, but a lot of really smart people have been investigating this and bringing all sorts of technology to bear. And we've learned a great deal. And we're gonna get into a lot of that. Moving on, sadly, we're gonna show you why we're convinced that the great bulk of cave art has been unfortunately destroyed over time. Also, how some of what remains shows the very first images of volcanoes, landscapes, stars, hunting instructions, directions for rituals, sometimes involving hallucinogens. I think you're gonna find it as fascinating as I do. Let me set the stage. Look, Papa Oxen! With those words, the wonderful paintings at Altamira Cave in Spain were discovered by eight-year-old Maria Satuola in 1879. Mr. Satuola had earlier traveled to the World Expo in Paris, where he was excited by an exhibit of prehistoric tools and art objects that had been found in French caves. After learning a few excavation techniques from the exhibit's experts, he returned to explore the caves near his home in Cantabria, Spain. He was busy digging in Altamira's floor 
while his playful daughter ran in and out of the cave. No one had yet recognized the antiquity of Paleo cave art, with much of it being attributed to Romans. It was Satuola that first proposed their extreme age, and he was roundly criticized. And because of the complexity and beauty of the art and the lack of soot on the cave walls, he was even accused of forgery. Turns out that Altamir's artists probably used bone marrow fat to light the cave, which limited the soot. It was 1902 before the extreme age of the artwork was generally accepted, but Satuola never enjoyed his accomplishment, having died 14 years earlier. Later work has shown that the paintings were made over a span from 15,000 to 35,000 years ago. In 1879, hard at work digging in the cave's floor, Satuola burst out laughing when his daughter pointed out the paintings he'd almost missed. Makes me wonder how many of those things like that that I've missed throughout my life. I guess we all wonder about that. It also reminds me of Newton's famous quote, I don't know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore, diverting myself in now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. Along those lines, let me show you something that was found in an Alabama cave recently. Here's an image of the top of a low karsted cave ceiling in Northern Alabama. Don't see much there, right? But using high resolution 3D photogrammetry and more than 14,000 photos, Researchers have teased out hundreds, maybe thousands, of faint engravings that are over a thousand years old, of birds, wasps, coiled serpents, and intricate human-like figures clad in elaborate regalia. Turns out this is the richest cave art site in North America. Some of the images are 11 feet in length, among the largest in North America. Since much of the cavern ceiling is only two or three feet in height, the researchers and the artists had to lie on their backs to see the images. The figures are similar to those found on woodland style pottery and may relate to spirits and the underworld. It's exciting to think that new technologies like this may allow us to see previously unrecognized things in caves all throughout the world. And again, it's amazing what we may have missed throughout the years. We all know that much of cave art is breathtakingly beautiful. According to some reports, after visiting the Altamira cave in Spain, a blown away Picasso exclaimed, after Altamira, all is decadence. But here are some remarkable facts about the whole universe of cave art around the world, including some of the superlatives. The oldest piece of art found in a cave is the Macagansbat cobble of South Africa. It's a roughly three inch by three inch cobble of jasper that looks very much like a human face. It was collected as is nearly three million years ago and transported about 20 miles by a pre-human, probably Australopithecus africanus, among whose bones it was found. It was found in a dolomite cave that has no jasper. That's how we know it was transported. And it's the oldest manuport ever found. Some have called it the it me cobble because it's the first sign of self-recognition in hominids. The oldest works of art used to be handprints in Tibet that may be 226,000 years old, made very purposefully by children, probably Denisovan or Neanderthal. But hashtag engravings found in the Rising Star Cave in South Africa 
were very possibly made by Homo naledi. And if so, they're probably at least a quarter of a million years old. The hashtags were found near a chamber where some Homo naledi were apparently buried in pits. By the way, if these are burials, they are two to three times older than the earliest known Homo sapien burials about 100,000 years ago found in modern day Israel. All this by a species with a brain about one third the size of ours. Wow. By the way, I'd encourage you to watch a film that just came out called Unknown Cave of Bones. It shows some of the mind blowing and breakthrough discoveries and possibilities that Lee Berger, John Hawks, and others have uncovered at Rising Star. Stuff that's really shaking up our perspective about paleo people way back in time. A huge amount of work remains to be done to support these claims, but the film is extremely thought provoking. Moving on, researchers in 2022 determined that about a quarter of the hand stencils in several Spanish caves were made by children averaging 10 years or younger. Other studies of cave handprints elsewhere, as in this image of Cueva de las Manos in Argentina, dating to around 13,000 years ago, indicate that many, perhaps most, were made by women. Generally on women, the ring finger and the index finger are about similar size, whereas on men, the ring finger is longer. It works about 80% of the time. The study was reinforced recently by another in 2013 that found similar results for eight caves in France and Spain. So you know what? That increases the odds that nearby paintings of horses and bison and so forth were made by women as well. The oldest known cave painting is a Neanderthal 64,000-year-old red hand stencil in Spain. This image is nearby and it's likely of a similar age. And man, is it complex. I can't figure it out. These oldest dated cave paintings predate modern human migration into Western Europe by 10 or 20,000 years. In another study of a Spanish cave on the coast, researchers documented perforated red and yellow pigmented seashells that are an astounding 115,000 years old, much older than the oldest similar modern human artifacts in Africa or anywhere in the world. These Neanderthal artifacts and art refute the prevailing opinion that their art was primitive or lacking in comparison to the art of modern humans of the time. It also destroys the idea that Neanderthals only developed their art by imitating Homo sapiens. Looks like Neanderthals weren't that different from us, and they may have been ahead of us in some regards. The oldest representational painting of a warty pig is found in Indonesia and dates to at least 45,000 years ago. Nearly 350 caves that contain prehistoric art have been discovered in Europe. It seems to be the richest area, but that may be a function of preservation or of more investigators looking there. Here are a few maps I found on the web that show sites of cave art. There's clearly an over-focusing on Europe. I found no maps online that show a worldwide distribution, which of course would show many sites in Australia, Africa, and the Americas. A lot of art has been found in those areas, and we'll be looking into a bunch of that. Well, in the next episode, we'll be talking, among other things, about my favorite cave and cave art, which by the way is not Lascaux. Lascaux ranks way up there, and we'll discuss it too. And there is a pretty cool story about that. But I think you're going to find this other cave even more amazing and exciting. So be sure to hit the like button for this video and tune in to episode two of Paleo Cave Art Mysteries. Goodbye.